one. So, I think this is the route we're going to take, because we're out here, we're going to have to go around here, because everyone think. But we're going to have to loop around, so our route should be like... Does that make that seem good, everyone? Yes. 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 Yeah, that, let's do this. Let's go. Come on. Yo, wait, shouldn't we take the map? Psychogeography. My name's Adam. I'm teaching psychogeography this session. So right now, I am taking a look at a map of the routes we've walked the prior weeks and trying to think about where we're going to go today. It's sort of a radical way of getting yourself oriented in space compared to um, the traditional routes we take. We get in a car, we drive to the shopping center. A lot of the traveling we do, a lot of the sense we have of where we are and where we live and what the sort of boundaries of our world is are really defined in a lot of ways by things that we don't often think about. Each of you must have a completely different perspective on the neighborhood. Like, you don't live especially close to here. Uh -huh. So maybe you've come out here from time to time, separate and apart from Cola. Yeah. But it must be totally different from Cola if you live, you know, within walking distance. Do you walk here? Yeah, pretty much all of them have to be active. So that's what I'm interested in. Have, how many places have we taken you that you hadn't seen before? Yeah. Well, I think that's an accomplishment. I think that's great that we were able to walk from from the church and reach places that you haven't seen, even though you lived. How long have you lived here? Uh, yeah, um, a while. Um, years? Yeah, years. Yeah. Definitely. Not your whole life? Not my entire life, but we've been here for a long time now. Just decisions that were made, you know, years ago, or by people that we'll never meet about how to use the land, how to zone things, where to put shopping centers, where to put gas stations. So psychogeography, the method we've been practicing is just to basically either wander aimlessly or take a route that you would never otherwise take to kind of break those boundaries and just discover what's around you, where you are. In the middle of the class, I found this app called Fog of World, which is kind of, um, kind of a fun idea. You start out with a map of the entire world with a fog overlaid on it. And it's also a GPS app. When you launch the app and hit record, it tracks where you go and it clears the fog from the places that you've been, where you travel. So after a while, you get to look at a literal picture of places you go, places you don't go. And it, it really sort of extends this whole idea. Like it makes it very clear what your sort of assumed or, or natural or unconscious boundaries are. And hopefully find places you've never seen that are very close to places that you're very familiar with. And so get a sense of where those boundaries are and what it's like to cross them. So, kind of radical. <laughs> Thank you.
last words? Yes. Let's finish this with an eating competition. Okay, okay. But we have to do it at the snack -a dome Fine, let's go. Scene three. Hi, I'm Mylan Marathlis. I'm Christine. And I've gotten to collaborate with Christine Ginsberg. I taught uh, with Mylan. This last semester I've been working on a class called Digital Yearbook and Video Shorts. We've had a lot of fun this last year. The class has been a blast. We've tried to adapt the traditional yearbook format from uh, a paper to uh, a digital uh, video uh, Fashion. Let's collaborate on a yearbook which has a lot of um, a lot of uh, content in it that doesn't require a whole lot of creativity although we managed to be very creative with it but the the ideas behind it the themes of a yearbook are fairly standard in our culture we also worked on some short video productions that were completely creative and completely um, generated by our members, by our participants. We've had a lot of success um, bringing different skills uh, with the, the collaborative team. It's been a ton of work. We have learned so much. Kids have had to uh, write skits. How to use cameras. They had to learn how to operate cameras. And how to run the sound. They've uh, had to learn how to be uh, sound engineers. Um, how different microphones work 
some working better than others. They've had to be directors, they've had to be producers. You know, how bad lighting can be <laughs> and, and how difficult it is to film in poor lighting. Oh, we need a prop person, we need people to throw things at other people. We're now in the process of taking this gigantic pile of footage and we're editing. And that's a long, slow process, much slower. It's easy to point a camera and shoot. It's much slower to, to get through the editing process. So that's where the work is and that's where the art is in some ways. Philly Cam is a cable access TV network and they were gracious enough to allow us to take classes there so that we were able to work with homeschoolers to provide a, an online or a, um, uh, a cable access TV show. Um, we're looking forward to producing a yearbook at some point in the future and, um, and also having both our yearbook and our skits on Philly Cam, the community access media uh, cable stations. So look for it. <laughs>